they tried to destroy me. And Jesus is the way and the life and the King of Israel. I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I ain't see Jesus show up. I'm about to play certain videos of Kanye and make certain assessments on what really caused him his fate. But before that, can we talk of people who think Christianity is a life lived in Babylon? Most Christians today represent the seed that fell on the rocky ground. Matthew 13, 20. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with great joy such people tend to exert a lot of energy and hype behind the good news head or their conversion they forget who they were before they got born again they aren't aware they got issues and need to sit quietly so god prunes them they allow their pride to get the best of them and if they were famous before finding the faith they feel nobody can tell them what to do they want to figure out things on their own. Oh, I've met quite a number of those who always go back to their vomit. Verse 21. But since they do not have deep roots, they do not last. They fall away as soon as they have problems and are persecuted for believing in God. I tell you what, every sincere Christian has gone through that phase. If you haven't then you should expect it. You get so high about God, you want everybody to know about him. But be careful if you find yourself exercising such zeal without knowing anything in the word, what we call Bible. It's shocking how people find faith and decide to stay home and study the Bible for themselves. They see all Christians and churches to be fake. They tend to believe they are the only genuine Christians, so they try their best to figure out things on their own. Guess what? I am mocking you right now because it's just about time the devil pays your head a visit. Let me tell you the truth. The devil will try your faith regardless of who you are after a while and he will do that using biblical text. These are periods new converts tend to struggle if they have no teacher. You just find yourself interpreting the scriptures wrongly. God will begin to look cruel the more you read. Guess what? The devil is teaching you. It takes a man on the outside to prompt you and help you understand the scriptures you read. You can't do it all by yourself. Be humble and get yourself a teacher. Check this out. After John the Baptist baptized Jesus, the devil came to test his depth in the word of God. Jesus is on the wilderness fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And each day, Satan comes around to challenge him in scriptures. Now, these scriptures existed before the Son of Man was made flesh. And so Jesus didn't come to play. And what does Hosea say? Hosea 4, 6. My people perish for lack of of knowledge. The word knowledge in Hebrew is da'at. In Greek, it's epignosis, which speaks concerning your awareness on a matter. The dictionary defines knowledge as fact, information, and skills acquired through experience or education. To fit this definition into the context of this video, it will be defined as getting to know God through the acquisition of facts and skills through experience. Guess what? You don't follow Jesus ignorantly, else your current state will get worse than your previous or you previously were whilst in the world. These are seasons where people can't seem to help themselves, and so they conclude, que sera, sera. Right. Grace got us. The nature of a man is sin, so let's sin. God will forgive us. Congratulations. You found yourself an ugly teacher, the devil. Let's do some assessments here. And I know this video will go a long way to help that one person who is just about to be clutched by the devil. Look at this guy. Kanye West.
Now that I'm in service to Christ, mm -hmm. my job is to spread the gospel, mm -hmm. to let people know what Jesus has done for me. You know, I've spread it a, a lot of things. I, I, there was a time I was letting you know what high fashion had done for me. I was letting you know what the Hennessy had done for me. I mm. was letting you know all these things, but now I'm letting you know what Jesus has done for me. And in that, I'm no longer a slave. I'm a son now, a son of God. I'm free. What's your prayer life like? Do you pray a lot? This is a prayer. <laughs> We're in constant prayer. All of these celebrities out here, don't let them influence you in any way because they're controlled by the people who really influence the world. There's no such thing as a celebrity influencer. That is that all these people they don't, they're not serving God. If they serve God, then believe what they're talking about. The fire was up and I was super excited for him during those times. Now, what happened? I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm -hmm. Like, a, a lot of times I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I, I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm gonna pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen. But you know how many threats we've been dealt, dealt with? And I didn't pray my way through them threats either. I had to get up and do it myself. I had so much to do, I ain't had time to pray. Mm -hmm. So that's where, that's, that's where my issue is. And look at where I'm at today. One time I sat in my lazy chair and asked myself, so who's Kanye's teacher, right? Or pastor? Coming into faith isn't a sure ticket into Babylon, like I said before. Kanye's problem, I would attribute it to three things, pride, strange women, and persecution. Persecution from social media and family. How Justin Bieber managed to keep his head low and faith intact needs to be understudied. Most of the times when people come to Jesus, they think they are completely well and do not need help. That's a deception. Let me run you through the life of Paul as an example and I'm certain we would pick up a thing or two that would go a long way to help us. Paul had an encounter with Jesus on his way to Damascus. After that encounter, his disciples carried him to Damascus and there he prayed and decided not to eat nor drink for three days. The man is fire already because he has seen Christ, the Christ whom he persecuted. Follow this carefully. God sends Ananias to pray for him. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days and he was found all of a sudden preaching. Now, this is some next level fire and so all who saw him were amazed. And most of you watching might have experienced that. You just want to go out there and win everybody for Christ. Wait and learn from how the Holy Spirit managed Paul's life. His name was then Saul, forgive me. And so later on, Saul moves to Jerusalem and is brought in um, into the company of the apostles by Barnabas. In Acts 9.28, we read Saul was now moving about with the apostles preaching. The apostles take the other side of the street. Paul also hijacks the other side of the street. Beautiful. He knew he had to learn a thing or two from the apostles, although the Holy Spirit himself taught Paul. And so Saul over here is seen to be humble enough to be rolling with the apostles. And this is what people lack today. 
pride and arrogance level in Christianity today is over the roof. Most Christians hate unity. They love to scatter than to gather. I mean, it's so demonic. When the disciples realized how Paul was moving with his fire, they concluded this guy might die before his appointed time. He needs to chill. So they sent him to his hometown, Tarsus, to calm his nerves down. And Saul, at that time, wasn't offended that the apostles had sent him home. Acts 9 31. Follow me carefully. The next time we read about Paul again is in chapter 11 of the book of Acts, verse 24. Barnabas is sent by the church in Jerusalem to Antioch because there is great revival in the city. Barnabas then takes it upon himself to go to Tarsus to look for Saul because he had been with them before. By this time, Saul had been in Tarsus for almost 8 to 14 years according to history and he had not established a church yet. He knows what God had called him to do and so he waited and prayed until the right and appointed time. Barnabas carries him to Antioch and he doesn't get into action too quick. Barnabas makes him wait for another one year assisting in educating the congregation at Antioch before he begins to move around with him. Remind you, Paul had been trained to become one of the greatest rabbi in his time. You should take time to study on Gamaliel. At 11.26, this was the first time followers of Jesus were given the title Christian because they mimicked the life of Jesus. Paul had done so much evil while in the world, he needed more time for God to work on him before he goes out into ministry full time. Today, we don't see that. One becomes born again, studies for two years, and instantly wants to become a bishop. And this brush isn't any different from what Kanye did. What he did was good. Having a Sunday church service, can't really tell what he taught, but that was good but not at the right time. He didn't wait for God to fully work on him. He didn't have a pastor. He didn't have no leader, no shepherd to guide him in scriptures. And it's evident based on how he interprets the scriptures. At the end of the day, it's like, why should you fear? You know, it's another thing I don't like in Christianity, the fear of God. If God is love, why should you fear him? Because you place one fear, you get another fear, you get another fear, what do you have at that point? You're easily controllable. You're easily sellable. You're easily contracted because you have this fear on you. Like everybody gonna die eventually, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna live my entire life with zero fear. And this meaning he puts to the word fear is derived out of pure ignorance and pride. The devil will teach you if you fail to humble yourself and find a teacher. Proverbs 3, 7 says, And be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The Hebrew word for fear is your brain. The moral meaning to it is simply honor God or to obey God in most um, instances. Aside this meaning to fear, there is another one, which in Greek is apu, and that is to distance yourself or flee out of terror. And that was what Kanye spoke about. Now, these words need to be explained contextually, else you might get the direct meaning wrong. Matthew 10, 28 uses fear twice. The first fear is to distance yourself or flee, whilst the second fear means to honor or revere. Okay, so that had to do with Kanye's first problem. Now, his second problem had to do with strange women. If you want to be a man of God, go in for a woman who understands what it means to be in that same boat. Else, a time would come where your heart would be filled with trouble. The life of Solomon fits Kanye's story perfectly. Solomon is the most 
colossal failure in the passage of scriptures. For unto whom much is given, much is expected. Luke 12, 48. He had the opportunity of any man who ever lived. He began by failing to remove in false religion. He had a harem of thousand wives, pagan women who turned his heart away from God. His grandfather Jesse was no different. Women issues, which brought a lot of family problems. David, his father, had the same legacy. Women and also ended with a poor family history. Solomon repeats the same thing, and for him, he almost dies in the hands of Satan. God simply had to intervene because of the relationship he had with his father, David. Kanye has lots of family issues today because of his love for strange women, and he's not ready to correct that. Now, dude is a vulture. He became a vulture. I'm glad Asclep got to meet him to share the word of God with him a couple of weeks ago, and I know those words he spoke would go a long way to deliver him back to Christ. And the last Kanye problem is pride, and you could sense it anytime he speaks. Like, because that's a hell of a fight. Because, you know, because I'm God. And anyone to disagree, I'm the God of me, and you can't tell me who I am. I can't tell y'all. I could tell y'all. It's y'all job to listen. I'm the God of me. I don't know if I'm in heaven already and shit. I got number one. From that. Paul, you know, I might be on like a fourth dimension version of the lifestyle. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like I said, I must have died in this accident. It must be heaven. Let's pray for Kanye and all lost souls around the world. God is calling all men unto him. You aren't that special simply because you received the call. Be humble and let the word of God you claim has now become your authority work in you. Also beware of strange women. They can change your life easily from a God-fearing man to a Lucifer-fearing man. Most hard-working people in the world have nothing to show for it. And so seek ye first the kingdom of God and all other shall be added. Until my next